important with those special notes in music, like the third is important, the triad, the seventh, the seven notes of the major scale, the octave, the 12 total notes, the 24, this numbers. What are some very obvious basic things that are in music theory using those numbers that we use all the time that also show up in many other places in the, in the world? Yeah, well, every number in music is important. The, the tonic, number one, is important. Number two, you know, the second, that's important, becomes the nine in the second octave. So just knowledge of, of what you're, just knowledge of, of the number scale or the music scale, the more knowledge you have, the better. Yeah, so, uh, but every number is important. We could, uh, we could, we could give a whole, uh, you know, story on, on every, <clears throat> on every number. Really. Okay. Let's just check. Let's so just... you can pick some, pick some and I can tell you, you know, but I mean, yeah. every yeah. one of them. Well, if you want, you can just go through one, starting on number one, you know. Okay, number, one, number one is a tonic, okay? So that means, that means your focus, your root. Like if you have a, one way of looking at it, as far as music, you see what I mean? As far as music, when I teach, we always got to know where we are. So we have all these scales. Um, mm -hmm. well, I won't get into playing so much, I guess, today since we're just talking. But You can play it too, you know, if you can demonstrate it. That would be okay. awesome for some of the stuff, if you want to. Yeah, for some of the stuff. Yeah, we got to know where the tonic is. A lot of people are playing music, and I can tell they don't know where they are. You see me? But when I play, I always know where I am. You see, I always know um, where I am because the other chords, like planets, are circling around that tonic. You see me? So that's why I have so many extra chords and things like that. because. I know where I am. And keep in mind, I'm going to go back. Like, we have two brains, the right brain and the left brain. So one brain is analytical, like I always know where I am. The second brain, you have to stay in imagination. You have to keep your entertainment, like Elvis, James Brown. You got to keep, you got to know where, you got to know what time it is with the crowd, with the audience. You know, because so, what happens is you can get out of balance. You got a lot of uh, sometimes academic people or studio people that are out of touch with the crowd. You see I me, mean, that actually goes as far as to say that was a bad crowd. You see I me, mean, that means they don't have one side of their brain developed because the crowd paid money to see you entertain them and then you didn't entertain them and blame it on them. You see I me, mean, so that means that one side, their Elvis side, Michael Jackson side is not developed. A lot of times the same people would never teach Elvis or Michael Jackson in their college. You see what I mean? When the kids go there to look, be like Elvis and Michael Jackson, Jimmy, that's why they go there to be billionaires like Paul McCartney. They go there to do that. So that's out of touch for me because I did the college thing too and I still teach. Okay, the other side of your brain, so you want to keep this childlike side. The other side is you want to keep your grown up side, know exactly where you are. This way you have plenty of, um, you know, like you get your knowledge, so you have unlimited knowledge. So when your imagination runs out, you use your science. When the science gets dull, you go back to just your playful imagination. And then your soul's in the middle. If you master those two, it gets crazy. <laughs> and that's that's the way I play, you see what I mean? I'm actually in that focus every single time. I play a gig. I have both sides. I know I'm gonna, honestly, just treat me. I don't. I don't think anybody can out entertain me. I know I'm crazier than anyone else. You see what I mean? Because I work at it. I feel like even if I was on stage with Michael Jackson, if I was on stage with Elvis, James Brown, I actually feel like even now I know I'm not out there. People don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel it because, you know, I, I have this with me. You see what I mean? <laughs> and this is where my passion is. So I have an. I feel like I have a strong act that would put me right there with them. But that's just how I train. And then, of course, I try to teach that to Victor, you know, superheroism on stage. That's why Victor's into Spider Man, because he was told yin yang on his base, because he was taught that by me and his oldest brother. The older brothers echoed it. Roy Future Man, 
Joseph Allen Wooten, hands of soul, the right arm brother. <laughs> you know, they got this little symbol thing with them. Rudy Wooten was called the quiet storm. That's his name, soft and warm. You see what I mean? A storm, <laughs> quiet tornado. You see what I mean? Um, just like the Indians did. The Indians would give you a name, you know, Chief Screaming Eagle, you know. <laughs> You know, they, they did the same creative thing. They look at you and keep trying to develop your inner thing. So I hope, I hope that helps out a little bit on that. Okay, we said the number one is the tonic. Mm -hmm. okay. Meaning like I know where I'm at, even though the other chords are moving. Is there another number you want to try? Well, I just skipped right to the triad, to the, to the three, the power of that triad. And, you know, this number three seems to show up. Well, the third... The, the third is binary, meaning like there's only a major third and a minor third. So that's male and female. So that's why we got to know what the third is. Every single chord, right, is either it, it, is coming from a major third or a minor third. You see, every chord is a major third or minor third. Same thing on planet Earth. We got all these races and Eskimos and... <laughs> Mongolians and Chinese, blacks, whites, Mexicans, whatever, Australians, but it's really just male and female. And right? And everybody's really just a shade of brown. You see what I mean? So I look at everybody as the same. It's just how, how dark are you? You're just brown. Everybody's brown. You see what I mean? Some shade of it. Sometimes it gets so dark it looks black. Sometimes it gets so light it looks white. But no, you're a brown race. So it's just one tonic race. And then you're either male or female. You're either a major third or minor third. That's it. You see what I mean? This way, and, and that holds true. So then we can start, once we get these fundamentals, then we can start to work on it. You see, what I mean? we can start to build anytime you have a fundamental. Okay. So that's a little bit of the third. Also, the third for me, like I play in the treble clef, right? I'm a, so I'm a treble maker. Right, and treble just means we look, we go to a dictionary, you know, it, next thing you're gonna see the word try. You see what I mean? Which means three, right? Like a tritone means three tone. So we're talking about three bells. You see what I mean? So I know I live in Nashville, Tennessee, we have three stars. That's on our flag. So I'm studying this, you know, the Trinity. We got Trinity Lane up here. Everything's Trinity Church up here. All this three stuff. And the Matrix, the movie Trinity. So that ties into the treble. Troublemakers, you see. And people that write movies, they play on the words all the time. You see me, whether you know it or not. Whether you know it or not. So, uh, so that's the word three. The, 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 uh, then you got the triads. You know, so uh, the third is so important. And uh, you go to the China and their mafia or their Masonic stuff is called called the triads in China. That's, you know, you got Jackie Chan movies, the mafia, the triads are after them, meaning music. You come to uh, America, our underground, that's the Masonic, Ma Sonic. Sonic means sound, sonic boom. So our old government's talking about sound also. Their old government's talking about sound. And that, that really just keeps going. So, I'll, so tying everything back to music. To me, music is the way that you decode the mysteries. When they say mysteries, meaning the misses, right? Uh, the feminine, just go to music, it dissolves. Pyramids, great walls of China, the mysticism is gone. For me, anyway. So to me, this is the age where the music comes back. I think music died for a long time, meaning the, uh, uh, it was able to be squashed. But I don't think in this day and age, it can be squashed. I think, I think it's just another uh, vibration right now. We're in the age of Aquarius. We're not in the age of Pisces. And uh, ages have DNA. They're going to do what they want to do. <laughs> so it's best just, it's almost like your body has, your body's going to do what it wants to do. It's going to put hair on your face, whether you are well, you know about it or not. <laughs> so it's best to know what time it is. So anyway, but that's the triad. Three bells. Tri, bull. Treble. Three bells. Tri, 
three ads, triad, three ads, or three odes, three songs. So that's the third, basically meaning binary, male and female. Got another one? And, and, we, and that's just from the musical standpoint. We could keep going with that. Right. There's, I know I have other questions about that already, but yeah, just the next one I skipped to is like seven. Um, you know, and seven is like, you know, you get the seven chakras, you have the seven colors of the rainbow, you have the seven days of the week, you know, as you, you told me before, and uh, all this stuff. But um, yeah, what about, what about number seven, I guess? Well, seven is used quite a bit, like um, the three and the seven are used, are used together quite a bit, like in our, you got three plus, three plus four, seven. Uh, Yeah, three plus. They use quite a bit. Um, I, I want to. I don't want to go too fast. I know, like in Nashville, our zip code is three and seven. You see what I mean? So we have three stars on our flag. But then our football team is called the Titans. So I know that Titans that means seven tones because if you go do re mi fa so la ti or t. That's a T or tie is a seventh one. So that's a seven tones. We have all this Titan stuff. Titans means the seventh tone, which works with the third tone. So the third and the seventh is the nucleus in music. You see what I mean? That's the, called the color tones, the third and the seventh, right? So that nucleus thing is very, very important. It's the kernel inside the chord. Every chord, you know, every chord is going to be either major or minor, dealing with that third and the seventh. So the third and the seventh is the nucleus. This gets into nuclear theory. And the same thing that happens in tones happens in energy. It's all vibration. If you know how to transform your musical technology to science technology, you know what time it is. And this is where Pythagoras and these old uh philosophers, they call them philosophers, but these guys were scientists and probably manipulators. It wasn't just theory. You see what I mean? So uh, the third and the seventh is the nucleus. This is where you get Athena in the Parthenon, where we are. Parthenon meaning art, P, art, tone. P, R, that's for art, for art, for <laughs> art, tone. You see what I mean? Parthenon, tone on. Uh, it could mean the sun. On means a, a lot of things. Okay, but she has Nike in her hand. Well, Nike is the nucleus. That's why she's small. And 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 the sign says, Athena can't be defeated because she has Nike. Nike knows no defeat. Nike cannot, in, in this dimension, be defeated. And so Athena's got her. So she knows what the nucleus is. To me. Then you got Medusa. Well, me, that's the third. M-E, do, re, mi. You see what I mean? So this is the word association that the forefathers use all the time. That's why they try to tell you in the beginning was the word. Like, go with that first. <laughs> like King Arthur, right? So that, that's totally just a word game. A lot of people try to put down word association. I've seen people attack William Henry on the internet with his word association. But they're just hiding behind the internet because they know you can't reach them and argue. They can hide behind it. But if you use any logic, you see what I mean? And you see what I mean? If they, if they want to be logical and, and look at it again and scientific, the argument doesn't hold up. They're just trying to throw a quick wrench for the, for the people that won't search. But, but, it's, but the, that knowledge is not valid at all. Word association, it says in the Bible, in the beginning was the word. You see what I mean? Which means sounds. And so I, our forefathers always gave us so many things like that for you to look at. You see what I mean? Like the story of King Arthur. That's just art is king. You see what I mean? And that's why he could pull the sword out of the stone. You see what I mean? So there's a lot. And Victor finally, my brother Victor finally figured that out and made a record about that. Sword and stone and, and words and tones, something like that. Because he finally figured out and inspired him enough to make a record about it, and that's very good. 
the least put positive energy like that out into the public, you know, so they can look at it and, and wonder about it and study about it, hopefully lead them, at least see somebody's putting out another type of vibe instead of a corruption vibe. Yeah, you know what, since, uh, since you helped me decode that, which I never didn't realize all this stuff about this, King Arthur, and you're saying, you know, words and tones, sword and stone. Yeah. Can you explain some of the, uh, well, you want to just decode that for, for everybody? A little, like well, how he's playing with his words? I think you want to do it? You can do it. <laughs> oh, man. I think you got to figure it out. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, you all do right. it, and I'll, I'll, I'll get this oh, okay. and say something about it. All right, well, I learned this from you. So uh, basically, yeah, sword, the word word, if you just take the words and put the S in the beginning, it's sword and tones, just take the end word and it's stone. So these words are actually really the same, the same thing. Word, yeah, sword and stone is words and tones. And I, I think the he's- on the end, right? Yeah, taking the end and putting it on the beginning, which is a- uh, Interesting, it's so easy to overlook, like you're talking about this, this wordplay, and it is so easy to overlook uh, all these things that are right in front of our face, you know? But I thought that was beautiful, and maybe that's saying, you know, like you said, art is king, this is the way, maybe to, to pull the sword from the stone, you know, the words, using these words and tones. And, uh, exactly, uh, that's why all the strong men, the learned men, everybody, nobody could pull it out except a little kid, because he still had his imagination. So then the wizard, you know, King um, Merlin, who's back there manipulating nations anyway. You see what I mean? He's like the secret Masonic triadic force of China. He's like the secret society, the underground society. He's a secret wizard manipulating, manipulating governments. He's, he's looking at the kid. He's saying, this is the one. The other guys are a waste of time. So there's a lot of knowledge in that. You look at King Lancelot, that's, the, that's Allah. That's talking about music. Lance, that's La. You know, Allah, Lance Allah. I mean, I'm, you know, so they're trying to show you the, the minor side. You know, he's he likes Guinevere. You know, that's G, the one, the one fire. That's fire. You know, she's the queen. She's the fire, Guinevere, Queen Guinevere. The G1 fire. Got the knights of the 12 knights of the round table. That's just the cycle of force. So you can see what these guys. So now we've got to read the more because these guys could really write some stories. You see what I mean? They were because back then the queen or whoever the king, whoever, paid them to write the perfect story that would never get old. You see what I mean? Same way they had to write, like when the patriarch matriarchal society, they had to make instruments guitars, trumpets that never get old. They couldn't make one and 10 years later it's gone. So we, we, we renovated. No, we're in 2021, we're playing the same trumpet. Technology keeps changing, the trumpet doesn't change, the guitar doesn't change, because they figured out way back then, they figured out the fundamental. It's the same thing with the stories. Stories don't change. The melodies, like, like uh, a jazz melody or a real melody, it doesn't change, it just keeps staying there. For <laughs> year after year while technology and the times change. But when you play a wedding, you got to go back to my girl, my girl. <laughs> you see what I mean? Even though it keeps time. Keeps, so this, this is inside knowledge, how that works. This is pulling the sword out of the stone. You see real meaning, looking at it, looking at something more than once. The mistake humans make all the time the whole human race around the world is they look at it once, they look at it twice and think they got it. You see I me, mean? but you look at Osiris. Osiris has this robe on, the Egyptian giant king, right? He has a robe on with, with eyes all over the robe, right? There's just eyes all over his robe, which means many things. You see what I mean? It means he, they call him the all-seeing eye. He could see everybody, kind of like Professor X and Cerebro and the X-Men. So that's kind of like an Osirian kind of a thing. Him in the wheelchair, that's a whole, that's an ancient uh, sim symbolic thing. But having the eyes to see everything, but it also means he would look at something over and over and over. It's on his veil, he goes into the shed. Cerebro's a, a veil, it's a lone place. 
It's talking about when you shed, you get that vision. You see what I mean? When you shed, you get this inner vision. You see what I mean? And that's really, to me, that's the number one meaning of what, what Osiris's coat is really doing. The reason he's king, because he's because he's he's in the shed all the time, which is which is uh in practice or in a in a veil. And that's what the uh that's what the that's the main theme of all these ancient stories and Bible prophecies that these guys went to some type of practice, some kind of desert, some type of solitude, and then they came out enlightened. Mm -hmm. All right, so I hope, I hope that helps out a little bit.